When you come across doubt in your practice, you have to remember there are many kinds. To begin with, there's skillful and unskillful. Skillful doubt is basically curiosity. You realize there are things you don't know. And there's something in the mind that wants to find out. That kind of doubt is actually encouraged. It's the doubt that has no curiosity. That's what you've got to watch out for. And that can be there. either be doubt about the practice or doubt about your ability to do the practice. But if it's the kind of doubt that just dismisses things, then you've got a defilement. We've got to get around it, realizing that's not really doubt, it's dismissiveness, belittling yourself, belittling the practice. And if you're belittling yourself, you have to ask yourself, how much longer do you want to do this? Put up with this. Be subject, subject to this. You're basically placing a ceiling over yourself. There's nobody else here saying that you can't do the practice. If you're the only one saying that. You have to ask yourself, are those voices in your best interest? Sometimes they will sound very objective, but just because they sound objective doesn't mean that you have to trust them. And there's an irony right there. They're teaching you not to trust yourself, but they want you to trust them. So you have to ask yourself, looking back in your life, how often have those voices really been in your own best interest? To say nothing of the Dharma, even in the world, if you're going to get ahead, if you're going to make something of yourself, you can't listen to belittling voices, dismissive voices. You've got to show some pluck and courage. It requires that you look at your practice and value the little steps you're able to make, the little advances, because those voices will say, oh, it means nothing. But you think of even a John Mahabua. Who energized his practice, and it was a very energetic practice, by taking pleasure in seeing, as he said, just a little bit of a scale of bark coming off the tree of my defilements, taking some satisfaction in that. In other words, each time there was a little victory inside, he would celebrate the victory, or he wouldn't let it get him complacent. But it would energize him. Think about Ajahn Swat, that time he went to see Ajahn Mun. He was still a very young monk, and his mind was still not yet settling down. He was somewhat afraid of Ajahn Mun. And one day Ajahn Mun just out of nowhere asked him, How is your practice going? And Ajahn Swat, in embarrassment, said, Well, it's not doing very well. My mind seems to be all over the place. And John Munn encouraged him. He said, well, knowing that a scattered mind is a scattered mind, that's part of mindfulness practice. And the John Swat took it well. As he said, he realized that John Munn was not saying what he was doing was good, or he should be satisfied there. But it was a good step, a step in the right direction. So learn to notice where you're making steps in the right direction. 
And you see a step in the right direction, well, make another, make another. Learn how to urge and encourage and rouse yourself to overcome those belittling voices. So that's one kind of destructive doubt, the dismissive doubt. Another is lazy and impatient doubt. The one that says, I want to get quick results and the results aren't coming as quickly as I want them. And then turns itself into doubt. Maybe I can't do this. But if you don't do this practice, what are you going to do? The path to awakening may seem long, but the path that doesn't go to awakening is a lot longer. It winds around and goes up and down and just keeps going through some sorrow without any end. And as we we're saying today, as you go from one life to the next, it's a very precarious operation. There's so much you have to leave behind. And you're really not sure what you can take with you. Or what impulses will arise in the mind at that moment that have been buried for a long time and suddenly come out. So which path is shorter? The path to awakening or the path away from awakening? It's the path to awakening is the shorter path. And as John Fuang said, it, it's one little step at a time, but you have to keep doing it continually. In Thai it was a pun. The word nit means continuous and also means little. It's spelled differently, but they're pronounced the same. It's the continuity with which you take your little steps that's going to move things along. We like to take great leaps and bounds. But as the Buddha said, it is a step-by-step -step practice. An accountant came to see him one time. He was talking about how accountants were trained in a very orderly step-by-step -step way. And it seemed he had a very orderly step-by-step -step kind of mind. He wanted to know if there was a similar pattern in the practice, and the Buddha said there was. You start by developing a sense of shame and compunction, realizing that your actions really do make a difference, and you want to be sure that you act only in ways that will be skillful, that will give good results, harmless results. And then you start developing mindfulness and restraint of the senses. And gradually you train the mind so it's more and more inclined to want to settle down. In each case, you take the joy that comes from accomplishing the previous states and use that to energize yourself to go on for the next and the next. So don't paint a picture of how long it's going to be and how impossible it seems, because that's just going to weigh you down. Look back on what you've done, and look for the good things you've done. After all, the voices that are belittling are selective, but they select the times when you slipped and fell. But for the purpose of the path, you learn from the times that you slipped and fell. But then you also remember it is possible to get up and move on, and you've done that too. So if you had your slips, keep remembering, okay, I recovered from that one, I recovered from that one, I recovered from that one. That's a pattern. And use that to encourage yourself. Because a lot of time doubt is disguised. It's something else, another defilement of disguise, dismissiveness. The Buddha actually lists that as one of the sixteen major defilements of the mind.
the commentary explains it as dismissing the accomplishments and the, the help you receive from other people. But it can also mean just being dismissive about yourself. And of course, laziness and impatience, those are defilements as well. So when doubt comes up, try to ask yourself, what kind is it? Skillful, unskillful. If it's curious, if it wants to know, okay, that you encourage that kind of doubt. If it's not curious, it just wants to give up. Then you ask yourself, well, why? What's going to be accomplished by giving up? And learn to engage in some mental fabrication. Try some perceptions. That are true. You're not making these things up, but just learn how to perceive things in such a way that give you, you give yourself energy, give yourself confidence. You're able to manage that step, well, you can manage the next step, and then the next, and then the next. You think about it, I'll never be able to make it to the end. I just don't have it in me. Well, you as you are right now will not make it to the end. But as you follow the path, you will become a different person. The change will be gradual. The Buddha compares it to a hammer that you use every day. And you've seen other hammers getting worn down. You realize that each time you use the hammer, it's worn down a little bit, a little bit. But you can't measure it. But you know that using it does wear it down. The same way as you stick with the path, you're wearing your defilements down. And over the long term, you may begin to notice, okay, yeah, there are signs that I'm getting better, I'm becoming a different person. I'll focus on that. So when the dismissive voices come, you have something to show them, okay, they're not, they're not all that authoritative, not all that believable. You can't trust them. And as for the lazy voices, well, ask yourself that question, which path is longer? The path to awakening or the path away from awakening? And you go for the short path. 